I'm glad that all of you are here tonight. The, uh, yes, TR90, a revolutionary approach to actually gene expression and weight management. That's going to be the topic tonight. So here's the focus of this review. And this is going to be quick, but when I present, I always like to get my learning objectives out there in advance so you know what we're going to be talking about. So what most people don't know about basically why they're fat and why they can't lose weight. How does this eating and insulin thing work? Why calorie restriction and typical diets don't work? Is the problem all in your glands? Sometimes you've heard people say, well, you know, it must just be all in my glands. Is that a possibility? The answer is yes, it is a possibility. And finally, what is this TR90 stuff that you've been hearing about? So here's what calorie restriction basically is. It's where you eat more, excuse me, you eat less than your body needs to maintain a particular weight and deal with your metabolic requirements for the day. And this is the basis of almost all diets, the diets that are die with a T kind of diets, not <coughs> diet in terms of a healthy eating program. Uh, the failure of calorie restriction only is you starve yourself, you lose muscle as well as fat, and at the end of the diet program, when you refeed yourself, even with a few pieces of lettuce and some chicken, you gain weight because you have, you have lowered your metabolic burn rate. Probably the, the most wonderful example of that that I know of is Oprah Winfrey and her liquid protein diet. When she lost down to, I believe it was a size seven, got her size seven genes on, went on, on set, gave her program, came off, and at, at that point the diet was over and when she began eating normally she ballooned out to her previously morbidly obese self. Now that's not an aesthetic judgment, that's a medical judgment. And she struggled with it since then. And then, so this is a cycle. You lose the weight, you say, okay, the diet's over, you start eating, you gain all that weight back and more, and then you say, oh my gosh, I'm too fat, I need to lose weight, and then you start restricting again and you lose the weight, and then you gain it back. And all the time, every time through this program, you are losing muscle mass. And it's to the point now, I've got a woman that has starved herself over the years, and I, I would like to get TR90 for her on a compassionate basis. She's eating about 600 to 700 calories per day, and she can't lose weight. And her, her blood sugars are up, and, and she's very scrupulous about what she's eating. Okay, so here are the techniques. You can use diet books. Uh, joint Weight Watchers, diet pills and supplements. Uh, some of them are healthy for you. The Fin Fin was a noted disaster where there were actually some heart valve abnormalities out of it. And the diet pills, the so-called anorectants, or the stimulants, uh, work on your appetite by inducing a fight or flight response through your adrenals, so you're constantly taxing your adrenals. And then when you go off of them, number one, you crash, because now you're not, you're not stomping on your adrenals, and secondly, your appetite comes back with a vengeance, and then you just gain it all back and more. And then there's, of course, you can have surgery, uh, and again, number one, it's very expensive. Um, there was an interesting article in the Evansville Courier about a mother and daughter who went to Mexico to have their lap band surgery. It, it cost about $5,000 there versus $50,000 here in the States. And yes, it works, but again, a lap band is a technique for calorie restriction. And people lose an awesome amount of weight after the procedure, like 50, 60, 70, 80 pounds, but they're losing it because they are in an artificial state of starvation. And when you're starving somebody, they lose it in their muscles and they lose it in their fat. And also when you lose it in your fat that quickly, all of the toxins that you have been absorbing from the environment and the environmental pollutants come gushing out into your system because you're burning the fat. That's you burn it and you lose it. And when that happens, you get a toxic load. 
So these are not good techniques. And this, this just shows that obesity is a constantly increasing problem in our society. Here's some stats. About 70% of adults are overweight and 20% of children are overweight. And these, these trends are going, they, they are increasing. All right, here's the problem with the conventional weight loss. On, on the left, you see somebody that needs to lose some weight. On the right, you see somebody that's got a nice, improved silhouette. But what you also see is that muscle loss has occurred. So when the person on the right starts eating more, they're not going to have as much muscle to burn the calories, so they're going to gain it all back. Is this making sense to everybody? The, the muscle compartment is critical. I like these illustrations very much because they illustrate the idiocy of getting fixated on weight. So although we're talking about TR90 as a weight loss product, it is more properly described as a fat loss product. If you do it correctly, you will lose lots more fat than you will lose muscle. And, and by the way, I'm, I'm going to be totally transparent with you. I will, I'll, I'll give you a little hint on the punchline at the end. This is a program that I did, and so everything I'm telling you, I lived. And I will back it up with actual charts and numbers at the end. So on the left, we see two guys. They're both six feet tall, they both weigh 250 pounds, and they're both morbidly obese. At least, you would think they were morbidly obese if all you do is look at their BMI, which is the ratio of height to weight. The lady on the right, I mean, if, if you were, if, uh, ladies, which body would you rather have? Would you like to have the 127 pound body or the 136 pound body? The 136, well, but gee, that's, my goodness, that's like nine pounds more. You wanna be fat? Where'd that weight come from? Muscle. Muscle mass, exactly. So you'd be tough. All right, so here's the notion of the metabolic engine. And this is what happens on, on the left on a traditional calorie restricted diet. You just pull back, I'm gonna show it to you in two ways. You pull back on your calories and you pull back on your protein and as a result you lose fat, that's good, but you lose muscle, that's bad. On the right, you preserve the muscle mass. And you burn the fat. So more metabolic burn on the left, excuse me, decreased metabolic burn on the left because you're decreasing your, your muscle compartment. Increased metabolic burn on the right because you are preserving your metabolic compartment, your, your muscle. All right, this is a concept of glycemic index. And as I was considering the invitation to speak to you all tonight, I thought it would not be ethical to just say TR90, TR90, TR90. Get TR90 or you're screwed. Forget it. You know, that's, that's not an ethical way to do it. And also, what are you going to do after you finish TR90? I've already been asked tonight already. I'm going on this trip. It's two, it's going to be two months into TR90. And should I, should I start it now? or later. Okay, so you need to know about glycemic index. Glycemic index is how fast, can I see that T right there? How fast will something that you consume raise your blood sugar? So I will tell you the glycemic index of table sugar, and I have no knowledge that there's table sugar in here, but if there was, the glycemic index is 65. And the glycemic index of potatoes, white potatoes, is about 80. So you're much better, and the glycemic index of Cheerios is 70. So you're better eating sugar out of the sugar bowl in terms of what it will do to your blood sugar than you are having Cheerios or white potatoes. So it's helpful to know the glycemic content of the foods that you're eating. By the way, some of the lowest glycemic contents, spaghetti, and protein-enriched pasta. That's like 27. The reason people get fat eating pasta is they eat too much of it. But in terms of glycemic index, it's actually pretty good. So 
the, the red curve is the high glycemic index, spike your blood sugar, spike your insulin. Insulin is the fat storage hormone. The more insulin you have, the fatter you're gonna get. Is that clear? You want to stay away from insulin. And then could it be in your glands? Now this is a crash course in the thyroid and this is more, what I'm going to tell you in the next minute is more than most of the family physicians in this town know about the thyroid. So, and it, as we would say down home, it ain't complicated. So, we got the pituitary up there secreting thyroid stimulating hormone, TSH, going into the thyroid. Thyroid puts out thyroid hormone. That makes sense, right? It's a thyroid gland, it puts out thyroid hormone. The problem is, when you get down there to the foot soldier, you need T3. That has to be converted from T4 to T3. Thyroid hormone doesn't do much for you. It's the free T3, triiodothyronine. It's thyroid hormone with a one deiodinated uh, iodine, I, uh, and a mistaken off. And in order to do that, you have to have selenium. And most people, unless they are eating really well, organic, from totally adequate soils, or unless they're supplementing with something like this, are going to be selenium deficient. And I, I don't even have to look at the fine print, I know what's here. 200% of your daily allow, of recommended minimum daily allowance of selenium in this and in regular life pack, 200%. That's one of the reasons why people, when they get on life pack, they'll say, I feel like I've got more energy. My goodness, I think I'm losing weight. Well, of course. They are because now they're thyroid. If they were selenium deficient, now the entire axis is working correctly. And even if you have selenium adequacy, you still may have something wrong with your thyroid, and this is hardly ever worked up completely, and it's hardly ever worked up to the point that the doc gets the free T3. They don't get it. They get the TSH, call it done, and then guess is basically how it's done. All right. So this is a very quick review of where we've been and why we're fat. So this is the old USDA food pyramid, dead and buried in 2005. You can glance at it and see at the bottom, it's grains and carbs. And the reason is the feds got obsessed with this low fat deal. And it, it was that bad cholesterol that was going to kill people. And it was those bad meats and, and proteins and fats that were gonna make you fat. And if you ate low fat, then, I mean, it stands a reason, right? You eat low fat, so you're not gonna be fat. I mean, that's kind of simplistic, but that's the way the feds thought about it. And of course, it bombed. This is the way people ate, and then the entire society got fat. This was the updated version, my pyramid. Again, you can see the influence of the uh, food industry, cause grains and dairy are still a big part of this pyramid and it doesn't show any, any preference to vegetables and avoiding carbs in this pyramid. It's just more of the same, but in a slightly different way. This was a new one, the choosemyplate.gov. <clears throat> You'll notice on the top right that they still got grains and dairy. Many people are sensitive to dairy and many people are sensitive to grains. There's a great book by David Perlmuter called Grain Brain, talking about the difficulties that eating genetically modified, not original grains are causing. I'll leave it at that. But grains and dairy, not always the, the best thing. And this is a fake website. The other one was Choose My Plate. This is choosemypaleoplate.gov. There is no website like this, but it was somebody's idea of, this is what a paleo version of that would be. So now we're getting closer. Lots of veggies, fruits, low glycemic, and protein and water. That's a more healthful diet if you want to lose weight and maintain normal blood sugars. All right, so the one on the right is the former USDA food pyramid. The one on the left here is the zone pyramid. And Barry Sears came out some years back with the zone diet. And he was talking about lots of veggies, like half the plate veggies, quarter of the plate uh, protein and a quarter of the plate uh, low glycemic carbs. And so when you look at it, it's loaded toward vegetables, fruits, 
and low fat protein. This is a great, now I'm about to say something profound. This is a great way to eat if you can make yourself do it and if you have time to prepare it. If you can't make yourself do it, and if you don't have time to prepare it because of, of your frenetic pace, you won't do it, and you won't, you won't have basically the optimum nutritional program. So that's where we've been, and now let's talk about how do we actually peel the weight off. There are three things, three secrets to weight loss. Number one is control your blood sugar. So don't have don't have these. This uh, is, does anybody want this roll? You would be say what? French fries. French fries. These are probably worse because you can taste. The, the sugar in here, this will spike your blood sugar faster than eating it out of the sugar bowl. These things. Poison for, for uh, weight loss. So, and what will happen is, and, and, and the way I, I would encourage you to think about this, I, I'll share an experience with you. I went to hear Daniel Amen speak one time, and he, he was talking about the foods that people needed for their neurotransmitters to be optimal. And he said, if you eat protein, you will have plenty of stuff to make neurotransmitters. If you eat carbs, you'll be sleepy. And if you eat carbs at lunch, in about two hours, you'll be really sleepy. And he's a great speaker, and I paid good money to get there, so I want to make sure that I, I heard what he had to say. And he said, just do an experiment. Half of you eat protein, and half of you eat a lot of carbs. So I, I remember to this day, I was going through the lunch line, and they had hamburger patties, and they had buns. And I thought, hmm, carbs. So I just had two hamburger patties, no bread, no fries, no chips, and, and I think some cheese. And, and I cruised through that seminar. I didn't have the afternoon sack. If you want to experience what a post-high glycemic spike and crash feels like, this is the experiment. And do this only if you're reasonably healthy and not diabetic. Drink orange juice and eat two Pop Tarts in the morning. <laughs> and then nothing after that. And in one to two hours, you will crash. And that is, that is a recipe for weight gain because that's how a lot of people uh, will eat. And the standard healthy American breakfast of orange juice, coffee, and cereal. It, it will spike your blood sugar, and then you'll be hungry mid-morning, and then you'll be out craving something unhealthy. So, control your blood sugar. Number two, more small meals. I love Bill Phillips' book, Body for Life. came out 15 years ago. I actually personally know two of the Body for Life champions, one of whom is a New Skin Team Elite, Artemis Limper. Did you know that? I did not. She was a grand champion, one of the top ten in the country hmm. years ago. And then Jeff Life, the, uh, who's been described as the sexiest grandfather in America, the guy from Cynogenics in the genes, 70 years old, bald on top, looks like a hunk, uh, know him too. So more small meals, about six a day, and eat more protein. Critical. We were talking, uh, I was talking with um, one lady tonight about the amount of protein to consume. Mo most people do not get an adequate amount of protein. Today, I got started with 35 plus grams of protein at breakfast. It was a shake and a protein bar. At lunch, I had half a chicken. And tonight, I had the first piece of red meat I've had in a couple of, couple of weeks. And I'm, I'm sure it had 30 grams of protein. So more protein. And then I'll give you the best secret out of this entire book. Save 20, 25 bucks. Just listen to the secret. Tim Ferriss said, the best way to lose weight is thirty grams of protein within one hour of waking up. And I I read this as as I was doing TR90. I thought, well, 
darn, that's exactly what I'm doing. I think in TR90, it's, it's 30 grams of protein within 30 minutes of waking up. I think that's the instructions. But, you know, an hour is, is good. Better than most people do. Oops, I want to back up. So, uh, Dean and Marilyn were talking about age lock science. And this was the first internal product that had age lock in it and was age lock vitality. Do I believe in this stuff? Yes, it is on my auto ship. I take it twice a day. I would not be able to do what I do if I was not on that and my life pack nano and some other supplements. And the, the notion here is that your genes change. Back up. Your genes change as you age. So on the left is what your genes, and these are genes in the mitochondria, what they look like when you're young. And then the second one is what they look like as you get older. They change, some turn on, some turn off. And then the reset is the age lock technology where it changes the genes back to where they were. Okay, now how many of you have seen this slide more times than you would care to remember? Can I see a show of hands? I'm like, yeah, I've seen that stuff before. And I saw it and sometimes I thought, well, yeah, those are pretty pictures, but I mean, is that the real stuff? So I went out into PubMed, where I frequently go, and I looked at gene mapping. Okay, now this is not mitochondria, this is yeast and fungi. So there are the yeast species up there, and there are the genes. This is a gene chip, it is done exactly the way. Now they, they weren't trying to find the yeast, the little yeast, these youth gene clusters, mind you, but they were doing experimental science. Now, now I'm going to show you something in humans. Okay, this is prostate cancer. And this was a study by Dean Ornish that asked the question, can you change the genetic expression of prostate cancer by the foods that they eat? And the answer is yes. So right there, the left side is the pre-intervention gene expression. And on the right, is the post-intervention gene expression. And you can clearly see that they're different. And the only thing that was done was diet, a change in diet. So when we were at uh, Provo last time, we had the opportunity to sit in uh, Dr. Joseph Chang's office. And he talked about the human is basically, we're like the host for our genes. It's kind of an interesting way of looking at it. And the food, and he said, the food that you eat talks to your genes. So TR90 is more than just popping supplements. It is popping supplements that will talk to your genes, like h lock Vitality, yes, okay, and changing the foods that you are exposing your genes to. So no more rolls like that, no more Twinkies, no more desserts, the fun stuff. But I'm going to tell you, again from my experience, what happens to your craving for those fun things. So here we have two identical twins. And here is their DNA. They've got the same DNA, but when you look down at the bottom, lo and behold, they have different gene expression. And the reason they have different gene expression is the environment as it has washed over their gene and turned some genes on and turned some genes off, just like that prostate cancer thing that I, saw, that I showed you. All right. The other thing about gene expression is it actually has impact on the appetite control center of your brain. That's what the slide says. That's what I experienced. So when I go into a restaurant now, I don't have to have those, uh, those rolls. In fact, I don't think anybody at our table touched those rolls when, when they were served tonight. My, my buddy, Randy Kemp, a fellow TR90 grad, and, and I, there, there were no rolls when we sat down, nor did we want any. But it will change your appetite expression. So here's a normal calorie diet, 2,000 calories. Now look what happens as it shrinks down to the typical reduced calorie diet. Everything shrinks, including the proteins. They go from 90 grams down to 45 grams. So now you don't have enough protein to feed your muscles, because that's what your muscles eat. They eat protein, they want protein. 
You don't eat enough protein, your muscles will atrophy. Another very quick story. I had a friend of mine who was like a really hunky bodybuilder. And I mean, he had muscles on top of muscles. And he was telling me his secrets one time and he said, when I'm really lifting heavily and trying to build muscle, I will work out of the gym and before I go to bed, I will eat a pound of hamburger. Whoa. Because, and can, can you eat that much hamburger? Absolutely. If your muscles are asking for it, if you're working out, I heard about one mega workout today, and that cheeseburger is probably sounding pretty good to you right now. But if you're really, if you really work the muscles out, you really will want protein. I remember one of the one of the best workouts I had over at the uh, what is the the place with the dome on top, the racket club, Tri-State. Tri I was on the pool, and when I when I came out, this was with my my former family, and that's a story in and of itself. But when, but when I came out, I began craving uh, salmon. And I never, I never craved, I was, my body was saying, feed me salmon. And so we went to Chili's and we actually had, I actually had salmon. So this is the muscle retention eating plan. You shrink the carbs and you increase the protein. Is everybody with me so far? Okay, yeah, protein, 90 grams. So here's what happens with most people, the way most people eat. They have yeah, maybe a little protein in the morning, yeah, maybe a little protein at lunch, and then the steak and potato at dinner, the big meal of the day. So you get your 30 grams of protein at dinner and you, you elevate yourself into a metabolic fat burning zone, but you miss it through the rest of the day. So the TR90 plan is, 30 grams in the morning, 30 grams at lunch, 30 grams at dinner, keep yourself in the metabolic zone, burn nine hours a day instead of three. Do you have to have TR90 for this? No, you do not. You don't have to have TR90 for it, but it does work better. And I'll, I'll show you from my experience. Okay, so the eating plan is based on uh, solid protein and nutritional science, and it's an eating plan designed to complement the supplements. I'm going to show you the way it was done the last time. I'll tell you about how it's going to be done this time, and I'll tell you why the change and how I would do it if I was doing it this time. And I would do it the same way I did it the last time and end up with some extra protein shakes is what I would do. So. I know the, these, are, these are very small words for those of you in the cheap seats in the back, but essentially it's breakfast where, where you had at least 30 grams of protein, of which 15 grams, the way it was done the last time, is a TR90 shake. So a TR90 shake plus 15 grams. Now, did I do the TR90 program perfectly? No, I did it imperfectly. One of my imperfections I found out was that I was eating a reasonable amount of protein in the morning, but not quite enough. I was having 15 grams with my shake and two boiled eggs. Now, if you get anal about it, two boiled eggs, six grams of protein each, 12, 15 plus 12, 27, I was a little bit short on my protein in the morning. But it still worked. Then you have a mid-morning snack. Yogurt, cottage cheese, piece of fruit like apple. You got, you got to get the right fruit. You can't have uh, melons and watermelon and cantaloupe. Um, and grapes. Then you have lunch, again, a 30 gram lunch with either, and, and the way the, the original TR90 plan was done was two of your meals was a shake plus additional protein. The other meal was a regular meal, 30 grams of protein total from food. But anyway, this one is at least 30 grams of protein. Then you have a snack, then you have dinner, at least 30. And you'll see right here, 30 to 60 grams of protein. This is 15 plus 45 grams of protein. So they're talking about anywhere from 30 to 60 grams of protein three times a day. Since I'm um, not a six footer, um, I, my protein needs were less. So 30 grams I thought was about right. And, and I, I did the calculations after I finished the program and I found out it wasn't quite enough. I actually needed to be eating more. Had I eaten more, I would probably have lost more weight or put on more muscle. 
This is just uh, how many grams, so in an egg, six grams, in a hunk of salmon, 22 grams, in a, uh, a lean chicken breast, 28 grams, in the half of chicken that I had today at lunch, um, you know, it was easily over 30 grams. And you can get it from cheese and beans too. So <clears throat> TR90 comes basically in two flavors. One is the chocolate and vanilla flavor, and the other is the green shake. I use the green shake. I love the taste of the green shake. It tastes kind of greenish and kind of vanilla-ish. And it, it, it really was good. And if I needed to, to, to just cram 30 grams of protein in it, I would mix it with another vanilla powder from something else. And then I get my shake. So you have the shakes twice a day, either with or without extra protein. We'll get to that. And then you have this jump start, which Randy and I decided was something like, well, we decided it was like a really powerful stimulant. And it's, <laughs> it, it will definitely get you going in the morning. Your eyes will be open like there. And I actually partially decaffeinated myself in the morning. I, I, had to, I had to start making my coffee half and half, half calf and half decaf, or I would have been just too amped up when I got into work. And, it gets you going, it gets you started, and according to the, the stuff from New Skin, Pharmanex, it changes your body's silhouette in two weeks. And actually, people were asking me two weeks after I started the program, they said, this, this I was out lecturing in California, you must be on TR9. I said, yes, I am. And then there's the fit and control. Now, I learned from uh, Penny Clock James how to, how to remember which was which. And the fit capsules are the whites, and there are three of them. And the control are the dark ones, and there are two of those. So it was like you take, you only take it in the morning and at night, and it would be dark then, so you take the dark capsules twice a day. And the other ones, you take, if I, I think I'm remembering this from you. It was, it was from one of you guys. Um, and then the other you take three times a day. Those were the white. So that helped. All right. So here are the benefits of low glycemic eating. When you, low, when you eat low glycemic and the trim shakes, I wish we had a bottle here, but the trim shakes are extremely low glycemic. They will not spike your blood sugar. And so if you have that and 15 grams more of protein, believe me, a boiled egg will not spike your blood sugar. So you stay in this range where blood sugar comes up slightly, insulin comes up slightly, but it never spikes into the area that the insulin will come out and, and be your fat storage hormone. So goodbye, Fat City, when you stay there. So here's, here's some results. I'm done with the technical part. Here's some results. This was Tina Clark before and after TR90. Uh, this is a man I know, Denny Pretz. <coughs> And I never saw him with his shirt off, but if I can imagine what he would look like with his shirt off, this is what he would have looked like both times. And I'm, I'm sure he'd, he'd rather model it the, the other way. It's a, how did he get taller? It's just a slightly, di slightly different. But it's the way it's cropped, Jim. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And then, oh, and then I realized back in October that, that I was getting my own belly. These were a couple of guys that I went to high school with. And, and uh, there's me in between. And I thought, this is not good. By the way, if you want to see a 170 plus pound fat boy, um, you can go to my YouTube channel and look at my explanation of how does TMS work. And I definitely had the Dunlop there. I, in fact, I saw it on, on video and I thought, boy, you're getting pudgy. But anyway, I realized I was getting pudgy and needed to do something. So on October the 28th, I started TR9. So this is what I look like on October 28th. One of, one of my friends said, that's the only picture I've ever seen where you're not smiling. You look, you look absolutely depressed in that picture. Well, of course I was depressed. I was looking at my gut in the mirror. <laughs> Now, this is me on January 28th, and this is... That's taller. This is, exactly, 
Must, must, and this is a, a photo that Lisa Bell shot in my office. So, okay, so you, but you can lie with, with photos. I mean, just turn a little bit, Photoshop it. So I, I brought my numbers. Oh, and I, I used this. This was my secret weapon to keep me honest, the Wythings Body Analyzer, because it measures your weight and it measures your percent body fat. And it talks wirelessly to your smartphone, Apple or Android, and it, it stores it. So you have day after day, week after week, month after month, in, in my case, your numbers. So these were my numbers. So this is where I started, October 28th, and I lost uh, 10, 10 pounds of body weight, which was a 6% body weight loss. And again, I did it imperfectly. And I, I, wasn't, I wasn't aiming so much for body weight loss, I was aiming for toning up and putting on more muscle. But still, 10 pounds. And then this was the fat. So I was down 7.7 .7 pounds of fat. So I, I like to play with numbers. So 7.7 .7 pounds of fat divided by 10 pounds means that of my weight loss, or 77% of the weight loss was fat. Now remember that mo in most cases, you lose 40% of the weight in your muscle. So I did not. So I thought this was pretty good, but then I had the question before I started the program, okay, so what's gonna happen when it runs out? What's gonna happen when I go off of TR9? Anybody here concerned about that? They're yes. thinking about getting TR9, it's like, oh my goodness, am I gonna turn into a pumpkin? That when it, when it wears, wears out? And the answer is no, you will not. So there are three boxes here. The first box is pre-TR9. And this is a grand total of three pounds of weight loss in four months, or three quarters of a pound per month. This was what I was able to do before TR9. I went on TR9 October 28th, and I lost 11 pounds, roughly. And so that's 3.7 pounds per month, or five times the weight loss rate. So for all of the math people in here, you can see that the slope of the curve has increased downward. And then what's going to happen after the TR90 is over? Are, are you just going to gain, gain it back? Or are you going to stay the same? Or can you continue to lose after your genes have been talked to and modified, and you continue to eat well? And the answer is, you can continue to lose. So my, my burn now is 1.1 pounds per month over the last two and three quarters month. I, have, I, I haven't been perfect, but I've continued to lose. So it's not like you're going to be on TR90, you're gonna lose weight, you're gonna stop it, and then boom, you gain it all back. Now, there are ways that you can guarantee that you will gain it all back, plus some. And that is, start doing the same old crap that you were doing before. You know, eating the, eating the sweets, eating, uh, drinking the high glycemic shakes, or, or, or uh, drinks, eating the, eating the rolls, etc. I like what my mentor John Asraf said. You all know who John Asraf is? How many know who John Asraf is? Okay, most of you do not. John Asraf owned Remax of Indiana. He owned the franchise for the entire state. He is a billionaire. And he lives in Rancho Santa Fe, California, and has multiple businesses. So anything, anytime a billionaire is giving me advice, I tend to listen to it. And he said, when you change the way you look at things, the things that you look at change. And that was true for me with what I was putting into my body. So I saw this in the uh, Christmas season at Schnucks. Now I like babies. I mean, by the way, you can have a perfectly well-balanced life without ever having a drink of booze, and if you're in recovery, I hope this isn't bothering you, but I like I liked babies. But I was able to walk past this and say, you know, I don't, I don't need this. I'm not craving it. This was at uh, Barnes & Noble. Um, less said about that, the better. And this is this is what I began eating. So I, I stopped craving the bad stuff and started wanting to eat the good stuff. And this is a salad I made. I thought, you know, it's a good looking salad, and so I snapped it. And yes, you can eat healthfully at restaurants like this. This is at a, a 
another chain here in town, Santa Fe Tilapia. There is nothing here that is not TR90 appropriate. It's a big hunk of protein and veggies. Perfectly appropriate, very filling. Here are my key down-home principles and I'm done. Jump start your genes. If, if you want to lose weight and have a major impact on your body composition, then you can gut it out. You can do lots of exercise, lots of cardio. Yes, you can change your diet. You will be able to talk to your genes that way, but I think it's much better if you just address them more directly with the supplements. Eliminate the junk, pitch it. If you don't have it, you can't eat it. I did that at my place. Develop a taste for low glycemic fruit. Um, we were talking at our table tonight, ostrich jerky or the balanced protein and carb bars. I, I never, I, I try to never get a protein carb bar that has more than two, two parts carb to one part protein. And I like it much better if it's one, like one gram of protein and one gram of carb, if it's balanced. And the, the ostrich jerky was my secret weapon. So I, I use this during, and I still use it, but when I was doing TR90, I'd have that on the little uh, credenza next to my desk. And in the middle of the morning or the middle of the afternoon when I got hungry, even after my 30 grams, I'd reach over, grab it, I'd have one or the other, and it would just ease me right through the morning or afternoon. Okay, we talked about that. Eat real food, not, not, the, uh, not the packaged stuff. Minimize eating out, no fast food. I, I never ate fast food during, uh, during this program. I, I ate at a Mexican restaurant once. Uh, and eventually, I will, I will record this experience. I've already got the title picked out, Breaking Bad on TR90. <laughs> uh, but it, it was educational. And Axiom, if you're full up with the good stuff, you won't crave the bad stuff. So you don't have to, you don't have to do TR90 for, for some of this, but you do if you want to talk to your genes. Um, as Yogi Berra said, if I hadn't believed it, I wouldn't and done it. I wouldn't have seen it. And I, I did it and I saw it. So the question at the end of this program, you've got the facts and what will you do about it? Thank you very much.